Have you noticed that American vehicles are getting larger? The top three best-selling vehicles in the U.S. for 2023 are all massive pickup trucks. When you look at the top 15 car models sold, only three of them are sedans. Everything else is either an SUV or a truck. In the rest of the world, automobiles are notably compact. In Europe, for example, compact cars like city vehicles, subcompacts, and smaller cars accounted for over 35% of sales in 2021. In the United States, these three categories represented just a little over 10% of sales. I mean, there's a trend for extra in many aspects of consumption. Refrigerators in kitchens or fast food meals are larger than their counterparts in other countries. Studies say that consumers have a preference for larger vehicles when given the choice. So there's a bit of a chicken and egg situation here. Consumer preferences have pushed car manufacturers to produce progressively larger vehicles. Massive trucks and SUVs were made one after another. And then, to top it off, this giant 8-foot-tall red truck came roaring by and left behind a trail of thick smog. Considering rising environmental concerns and record-breaking heat worldwide, you would expect smaller cars to be more popular. Apparently, no. But when thousands of people follow this trend, many other problems come along. We'll get to that later. The Ocean State used to be the last stronghold of the majority car culture, but it couldn't resist any longer. Even Rhode Island has had a takeover of trucks. From the 1900s until the late 1980s, cars ruled the roads across the nation. But in 1989, trucks made their move, starting with Alaska. After that, several states in the Mountain West and Northern Plains joined the truck trend. It was after 2008 that most states embraced trucks, especially when crossover utilities gained popularity in the suburbs. This truck wave seemed to peak in 2012. More than a dozen states switched allegiance. Here, some industry experts argue that regulatory gaps have contributed to this transformation. Loopholes that favor trucks have played a significant role in driving this trend. Updated tracking methods by the Federal Highway Administration included pickups, SUVs, vans, crossovers, and even commercial and government vehicles in the truck category. Okay, but why do people want to go for these vehicles? Well, gas is relatively cheap in America. Plus, many people find larger vehicles more convenient. Lastly, with massive advertising and lobbying budgets, car companies have a strong motivation to sell people light trucks. Cars usually have two rows of seats and a trunk, or hatchback, while light trucks are typically built on a truck chassis. In the case of many crossovers, they're built on a car chassis with some off-roading features added. Nowadays, the theoretical distinction between a car and a truck can be a bit blurry. What's certain is that trucks are generally more profitable than cars, thanks to two historical factors. First, there's the chicken tax a 25% tariff imposed in 1964 as part of a trade clash with Europe. This tariff made producing pickups and cargo vans more profitable in the U.S. because foreign factories couldn't undercut the prices of American manufacturers. Second, the corporate average fuel economy standards were established in 1975. They were more lenient for work trucks and light trucks compared to family sedans. Trucks were also exempt from the 1978 gas guzzler tax. These incentives led American car manufacturers to focus on trucks. In fact, this sort of resulted in the birth of the SUV, which often combines the features of a car and a truck. Nowadays, you go towards a crossover SUV if you have a family of five, for example. It's a vehicle resembling a station wagon with some extra features. These extras allow it to be classified as a light truck. In 2016, the automotive landscape in the United States was undergoing a noticeable shift as SUVs and pickup trucks took center stage on the market. With each passing month, the share of traditional car sales was gradually shrinking. It was largely due to the lower petrol prices and changing consumer preferences. SUVs have long held a special place in the hearts of Americans. 
crossovers, a category including smaller SUVs like the Toyota RAV4 and Ford Escape, bear a striking resemblance to the cars of the 1950s. These similarities emphasize the vehicle's taller profile, elevated seating position, and spacious interiors. This combination resonated with consumers, who appreciated the commanding view of the road and expansive window views, causing them to drift away from the traditional sedan. Sales of larger sedans had taken a sharp dive, and even the luxury sedan market had stagnated. This pushed companies like Maserati and Jaguar, originally known for their sports cars, into the SUV market. Even iconic brands like the Porsche began to focus on SUVs and crossovers. They realized the popularity trend of consumers. Andrew Coetzee, head of product planning at Toyota, says that their strategy emphasizes injecting more personality and flavor into their vehicles, particularly to cater to younger buyers. Okay, the look and feel of these giants might be great, but now let's explore the less seen side. There are drawbacks to these larger vehicles. They come with a heftier price tag and tend to consume more fuel. When they were first made, fuel prices weren't high. But now, spending more on fuel can be a problem for your wallet. There's more. Some research suggests that accidents involving larger vehicles contribute to more fatalities on American roads than their counterparts. They also pose a greater risk to pedestrians and cyclists. The number of pedestrian fatalities has doubled. In 2021, road accidents became the second leading cause of saying goodbye to this world for Americans under 45. This situation would be merely intriguing if the large vehicles didn't have a range of potentially lethal attributes. As American cars have grown in size, the number of fatalities among drivers and passengers inside these rolling fortresses has decreased by 22%. But according to experts' estimates, thousands of pedestrians' lives could have been saved between 2000 and 2018 if Americans had continued to favor smaller vehicles. The association of individualism with driving can also have the worst consequences for those inside cars. Almost 1 in 10 drivers and front seat passengers in the U.S. don't wear seatbelts. And 45% admit to regularly driving at least 15 miles per hour over the speed limit on highways. These percentages are far lower in the UK at just 3%. In total, 43,000 individuals lost their lives on American roads in 2021. This is the highest mortality rate among developed nations by a substantial margin. Estimates indicate that a fifth of these lives could have been spared each year if the rates of speeding and seatbelt use match those of comparable countries. Modern-day pickup trucks are now designed more for kids and families than livestock and giant rocks. Before the 80s, nearly every pickup truck in the U.S. had a single cab, meaning you could squeeze in a total of three people inside. They all shared a bench-style seat. Plus, the bed stretched eight feet making the truck a full-sized, long-bed vehicle. But these models are becoming a relic of the past. As of 2020, 80% of pickup trucks in the streets sported what we might call extended crew cabs. This means they've got not one, but two sets of comfy seats for up to five people. Most of these models also have four doors that could rival your average suburban home's entrance. The cargo space? Well, let's just say it's been put on a diet. These passenger-packed cargo-slim setups have become all the rage, so much so that a few brands have said farewell to single-cab models. As pickup trucks evolved into family-friendly rides, they underwent a makeover too. The typical American truck now commands a price tag close to $50,000, marking a 41% surge from a mere decade ago. These trucks often flaunt lavish, feature-packed interiors crafted to give high-end SUVs and sedans a run for their money. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.